a live draw workshop demo with Nico. He's going to be painting something for you, and I believe he's using the new iPad Mini. Yes. Which is pretty right. cool. Yeah, so you'll be able to see that one in action. But um, enjoy. Thank you. Welcome to my little uh, hour of uh, painting. Uh, maybe some of you were at my talk yesterday. I'm sorry, it's going to be a little repeating in the beginning, uh, showing some stuff. But um, uh, today I'm going to focus a bit more on characters. So yesterday I did a little uh, environment painting, but with no character. And I think that uh, uh, two things are important. Like I divide what I paint into two. Things. It's basically environments and characters, right? Um, and I think that the storytelling part of the, the characters comes with the storytelling part in a way. But there are always a symbiosis between, like here it's just characters, but they're all together. So that's, you can kind of figure out like a story here. But I, uh, ever since I was a kid, I loved movies. And uh, environments and lighting and also how they affect each other right you have characters that are integrated in scenes and uh, that tell the story so i always love to to put a little narrative into my painting sometimes i don't but i am always happy when it, there's a little story there and of course if you remove the character from this shot it's going to be kind of boring maybe just a yeah, just a scene in the forest in the nighttime. But both him and the torch will, you know, makes this painting come to life. So, so characters and uh, and environments, they work well together. So today I'm going to do a little uh, character painting. Sometimes they're small in the scene. Sometimes they're just almost like scale reference. Uh, sometimes they're the main focus. And the way that I uh, approach uh, painting, especially if I just do my own artwork, is that I, uh, I would like to have some sort of environment before I start painting the character, unless it's just a pure character's uh, illustration. Because it's, uh, uh, I like to v sort of visit the location a bit, just to get to know it, um, and to, to know then what kind of character or what the story could be in that place. So just a few examples here, uh, from sort of goofy, rough stuff to, to uh, hard uh, stuff. But again, uh, like this one, for example, um, if you wouldn't have the characters in there, it would be impossible to know the size of the ship. So scale ref is just, uh, yeah, it's also a very good way to use characters. I like this one, for example, I. I uh, I painted most of this drawing. Like the last thing I painted in this was the ghost geisha. She was the last thing to enter. Uh, I can show you a bit of the video here. I'm gonna. It's seven minutes. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna scrub quickly through. They also see a bit of my process. I always or very very often I will just do like a like a sketch uh, and keep stuff just in grayscale. And I keep, of course, overlapping stuff on different layers and um, uh, build it up usually just in grayscale. Also, before I, uh, like this is going to end up being a nighttime shot, but uh, right here it could, could be like daytime too. So that's also a decision I took later on. I just wanted to get the composition going and get sort of the point of view or the camera, camera work, if you will. And um, I also think very much like a camera uh, man when I'm setting up the perspective at the first time. I'm thinking like, if this was a movie scene, where would I want to see this from? And here I start to introduce the colors and the mood and to kind of go for a, a what time of day and yeah, the atmosphere in the painting. But I still feel like there's no real story here. It's still just like a point of view of a of a night situation in a in an Asian uh, street. So I felt like there's like in the beginning. If I just go a little back here, you see there's a character in the middle of the scene. But I felt like he 
It's not very interesting. He's just standing there leaning. So I, I took him away. And then at the end, I was like, oh, it would be cool if it was like a ghost, a ghost geisha that was floating in the middle of the street. So, um, and this one, I, I like to work from both line art or like a sketch, but also just blocking it out a silhouette. And I recommend do both because uh, they're really, they have their own strengths and combined they're even stronger. So if you're used to only you doing line art, try out to just block out stuff and think of silhouette um, and vice versa. So doing both is really, has, has given me a, a lot in case of, um, like most often my art doesn't end up with an outline. So I, try to get rid of it anyway, but not having it in the beginning just has a certain freedom to it. So that's, uh, yeah, we're gonna skip forward to how it looks in the end, so. Okay, so the plan is to paint uh, a little scene. And of course, I'm gonna go for the toilet, because that's a, that's a nice environment to be in, right? We all been there, I hope. <laughs> Um, but I kind of like the dirty, gritty stuff as well. I'm not going to go like toilet dirty, gritty, but you know, uh, more like a public toilet type environment. And the character there where he's uh, uh, seeing himself in the mirror. So the, we're sort of sh watching him over his shoulder, looking at him in the mirror. So, we, so that, that's the plan. That's the idea. So the first thing I do is I set up perspective with a kick-ass perspective tool in Procreate. And I like my lines to be black, so I always just put these colors down. It's going to be a three-point perspective. And if the horizon line is a bit high, like it is here, the third point has to be low perspective rules. I'm just twisting it like this to get that point further away because you cannot zoom that far out this way. So that's a little tip. Just turn it around. You can get your third point further away. Something like this. And then I can adjust. I want to see the perspective lines, but I don't want them to be in the way, like very busy. So something like this. And I always tone down the back background color, the background value, because I, I don't like to work on white. All right, so I'm going to start doodling in the, in the environment here. So my setup is I have a couple of favorite brushes here. As for those of you who saw the Talk yesterday, all my brushes are based on eggs uh, of, for some funny reason. I just have a cool brush set here with a lot of different, but I'm not going to use that many brushes today. But uh, uh, at least here's a, here's a couple of brushes and then eraser and paint. So I can always like flick up and down to flick between erase and paint. I have my flipping horizontally here. And then the drawing assist to turn on and off the perspective uh, assist there. And you just shout questions if you have any, because I'm not going to see your hands. So you just have to holler. OK, I'm going to start with a mirror. To have like the placement of the mirror, because this is, in a way, our main frame in the in the scene here. It's gonna be a little like a sink or something underneath here. And I want the lighting I want to be like a hard light right above the sink. So he's gonna get a, a hard light directly down to his face. And then maybe like a secondary light source that's a bit softer that's coming from behind.
I don't want to do too much of the environment here, but I, I just want to, before I put in the character, but I, just a little, just to get a sense of this place. And I love, uh, like, when you come into a, like a public toilet, there's all kinds of crap. It might be like a condom machine or, you know, it's always, people always leave paper on the side of the garbage bin. Like, what is that? It's like, oh, I missed, and then, ah, fuck it. I'm just gonna go. <laughs> it's like, what is that with people? I don't get it. I sort of hope those people, they stick to the shoe, and then they walk out with that trophy hanging after them. All right, so something like this. Maybe we'll see part of the ceiling here, just a little of it. And then the end wall back here, just to helps defining the room. And I want to have a telephone in there for some reason, like this public telephone. Because you talk in the phone on the toilet, right? So something like this. And now just to get a placement of the characters, I will I will just block in the characters first. I make, made a new layer because Overlapping stuff, always good to have on different layers. <coughs> so I'm not going to do very much detail on this character for now, just to have like a silhouette. Because the main character we're going to see in the mirror, not uh, the back head. So I might change this, adjust the, the closest guy here, sort of a real person. Also the placement and the, the size of him. Like that he's a little not like we don't see the whole mirror he's a bit sort of overlapping the mirror i had a waiter yesterday that spoke in that sort of speed it was amazing at the same time you had no clue what they were saying because it was just too fast so something like this all right we'll come back to him we just i alpha lock him because I want to, maybe he's even going to be bigger, sort of closer to the camera. He's going to be out of focus as well. I just need to know, I want to put some more stuff on the walls in there. And it's good to just get like a placeholder for, for the character. So I know how much space he takes up. And I'm going to have another layer uh, behind there, which is going to be our where we see him. And also just to get like the, the main size uh, bigger. We can have fun with him later, like what his looks like and, but just to get like the placement. And we also need to see him slightly from the side because we're not, it's not his point of view. We're not seeing it from his eyes. We're over his shoulder. It's a bit more of his, what's it, left side than his right side. Okay, something like that. So just to, this is great, just to, you know, test out things. Placement, like, it's not good if his shoulder is like covering his face, uh, 
where we see the back of him, but it's always nice to have the elements loose on different layers like this, so you can play around with it. And it doesn't need to make like perfect sense, like maybe it's a bit wrong where we see him in the mirror compared to um, how it would be in real life, but the cool thing about drawing, painting, illustration is that we can, we can cheat, we can do what looks cool. Just gonna liquefy that shadow a little, just to... Get it right. No, I'm not sure if I'm going to place him exactly here, but I'll come back to that a little later. So I'll just turn the visibility of him down a little because I want to add the phone. We need the phone. After all, we're at the public toilet, so who doesn't want to make a phone call? Just that I love that sort of stuff, like if it's ventilation systems or if it's uh, old uh, like trafos or you know some sort of box. There's always like a box and a thing and uh, some cords and yeah, I love that stuff. I kind of miss the public telephones. Not that I ever used them, but just they, they kind of look cool. It's some designer designed them to... Sometimes you have this like plastic hood around it where people drew stuff or, you know, stickers, all kinds of stuff. And all of those things are really helpful in case of making an environment believable to add all kinds of crap like that, because that's how the world looks. There's a certain richness to it. I saw a phone in, uh, I was in Croatia earlier this year. And there was a phone, which is basically the one that I'm trying to remember how it looked now. But that's the sort of pictures I take. I, it's not many holiday pictures, but if it's like interesting bird shit on the car, it's like, oh, that can become a cool brush or something. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't print them out and collect them in an album, but. Uh, Just gonna add some more of these chords and stuff that's breaking up the all the sort of regular lines in the room. All the super perspective perfect lines. It's always nice that it's a bit broken up by stuff. Maybe there's also like a, a garbage bin we see a little of here where people don't hit when they lose the toilet roll or Probably not toilet paper, it's more tissue paper, I hope. And we're not going to see most of this one, but still. And some soap. And because this is such a nice place, it's going to be like a soap, like a piece of soap that everybody has to use. All right, I will now make some uh, layers because I want to, I need some sort of solid layers. I will 
use this uh, automatic selection inside the mirror which isn't closed because this isn't this isn't working I will just turn off the other layers where's the gap down here I think yeah you need to close your shapes if you want to use automatic selection that's better and I invert that so that's basically the room so I make a new layer and I fill that in with a different value so it's basically this guy behind it. it's kind of like through a window but mirror window is basically the same thing so I will also you know if you hold your finger down on one layer you get this solo you can see just that layer that touch hold on the little thing on the right side it's very very nice if you have many layers and you just want to turn off everything else so I'm just also closing his shape so he's not finished at all but I also want to have like a solid layer to to kind of work on So the values I'm putting in here is just random. It's uh, just to have something I can alpha lock and paint in. And I can uh, click mask that one down. And a layer all the way at the bottom, which is the rest of the room or what we see in the reflection. How I did the clipping mask? You just tap on a layer and then there's a clipping mask uh, menu thing there. So this will point down like this layer, for example. I want that to be clip mask to this layer. So I just tap and then clip mask. So it's always points down. If I take the, the top layer now, for example, if I move that underneath, it's gonna be part of that clip mask. The same thing if this layer was down here and I move that up on top of a clip mask layer, it's also going to clip mask. So I just have to turn that off. I also see that he's not totally solid. Just make a more solid layer. Did I invert that? Nope. There we go. Okay, so now the elements are taking shape. I'm just going to also pick part of the elements in this room here. So we have, like the phone, for example, is in a separate layer. It's just nice to have some of that divided makes it easier later on but like this really rough shape isn't really closed at all also the sink somebody left a cigarette stump of course on the sink And of course, there are some posters on the wall here because important information is always on these walls. Call this number. Who does that? Who goes into the toilet and is like, ah, there's a number. <laughs> and whose number is it? That's the that's a dangerous part. Okay, I'm going to go very dark on this front silhouette for now just to really push that close and our main lights well i forgot to do this job here again just to select these sort of elements 
Doesn't matter if it's perfect, but just helps a little. Something like this. So I will, I forgot to invert again. There we go. New layer, slightly different value, fill. Yes, if I do super big stuff, like I've worked on some commercial illustrations where I worked like 10,000 pixels by 6,000 or 8 by 8,000, then you're down to like five layers. So then I might divide like the characters divided maybe, let's say the characters are divided in uh, four layers. Then I do the characters in one and then I copy them to another uh, or duplicate that so I can merge them and work on the environment on another four layers. And then I just spread it out over several uh, projects. I'm just adjusting the values a bit here. We're gonna get some color in here pretty soon, but I want the light source. That's important. The main light source. And I always paint the light source itself white, like, like the bulb of the light. Um, just gonna duplicate that and I'm gonna change the color of the duplicate because I want that to be like this fluorescent sort of color, bit sort of blue cyanish. Maybe around this color. And I put this in add mode. You can also put the light bulb itself in add mode. Uh, and I blur it a little. And duplicate it. And I blur it again, Gaussian blur. And I'm trying to sort of nail a nice fall off of the glow. And I want this to be atmospheric and nice. So. Also, anytime you, because I'm very influenced by film and I love how, like, even if it is a location on a public toilet, if it was from a movie, you still have the director of photography and the light team will still light that beautifully in a way. So it's always a lot of thought behind how something is lit. And also another thing, which is always, uh, almost always in the movies are smoke to get sort of the separation of the depth in the room. So not every dark part in the room has the same black level. So it's nice to have a light source, get some color. And I will, uh, I could just group these call to have that light there. Just need to alpha lock. So the next thing would be to do my sort of ambient occlusion pass. So with a, like an airbrush, I will paint in like the soft shadows that, that sort of naturally occur in any situation. Like you see it best when it's soft light, like a, a light will fade and be more dark towards the corners of a room, for example. And it also gives, uh, excuse me, it gives a more 3D sort of look to uh, painting when you get these soft shadows. And I will make a selection for the different sort of walls and the ceiling. Because it's, since the light is on one wall, uh, 
the wall it's going to hit the most is actually the one to the right because that's pointing sort of towards the light source. The wall, the the right around where the light is on that wall, that's also going to be lit up. But which direction uh, different surfaces has has so much to do with how they pick up light. That's also something that's good to study a little. So of course here up here is going to be a lot of light just around the light source itself but it's going to fall off pretty soon because this wall is not really aiming towards the light it's like the same angle so it the light doesn't really hit it much Feel free to ask any questions, uh, people. Also like this uh, telephone here, for example. It will be much brighter on this side, right? Picking up the light and also... So I'm just indicating now. Like the sink is pointing upwards, so that's going to pick up a lot of light. I kind of visualize being the cameraman on the scene and kind of like, okay, where do I want to... You can do this, like this is actually helpful. Another way to do it is take your phone, go to camera mode and just walk around, like pick a perspective. If you're kind of new to perspective, just taking a picture with the iPad or the phone and then importing that image, you can just align the perspective tool to that perspective to kind of steal or just take a perspective from the phone. Then you know that it's kind of a correct perspective in a way. Well, I'm going to start now, actually. I'm going to make a new layer here. Just let me see what's... Uh, okay, that's the background. So, just to, to get started with the color, I will put this color here in a layer, and I put this in uh, overlay mode. And overlay uh, has a few advantages. One of them is that you can add color. Another advantage is that you can add light and darkness to it. So I'm just roughing in with the airbrush here just to... I kind of want the secondary light to be like a red light coming from behind there. So you kind of feel that some place that we... which is behind us has some sort of red light to it. <clears throat> so if I go very dark, I can add like really dark, right? So overlay is almost like a adjustment layer in itself. That's a lot of power. I use overlay a lot and I use uh, soft light a lot. They're kind of similar. They're right sort of above each other, like that soft light, that's overlay. Overlay is a bit more brutal in the way it's it's a bit sort of stronger in what it does to your uh, image soft light is kind of like the the friendly brother that takes a bit more care of what's actually going on No, I had a color scheme in mind. I did the sketch similar to this earlier, like on the way here, just to sort of figure it out. Um, 
And of course, I'm hoping to get as far as I did then. I will just add this to the different layers. It's just a nice way to get started with the color. Uh, we don't actually need it on, well, don't really need it on the dude, but we need it here. So I need to unclip mask that part so I can just clip mask this down to that layer and merge. And then the last thing is the sketch. <clears throat> it's not going to do too much, but because it's uh, very dark, but it helps a little. All right. Okay, so let's just, uh, in the background here, to go a little darker, like what's on the other side of the mirror. But I also want to indicate what, what is giving that red light. Oops, wrong layer. So maybe the door into the bath bathroom is uh, where this light is coming from. And maybe we also see some of that cyan stuff coming in there. Is it Peter Hahn, I hear? Do you hear that? <laughs> yeah, I recognize his voice. Okay, something like that. All right, back with the light on. And of course, since this is a, like a public toilet, the mirror isn't pristine like it is here. I will add a layer, go to my Fury eggs. <laughs> Just add some nice little grit. Because I'm doing this behind the mirror in a way, it really works well. It's usually the edges are the most dirty. On my iPad. <laughs> now, I haven't uh, put that out yet, but uh, I will. I have a Gumroad of tutorials and stuff that you can uh, check out. Uh, and on every, every tutorial I have, uh, the, the brushes come with the tutorial. Sorry? My airbrush brush is uh, actually pretty much the default spray paint medium nozzle. Yeah. Because I, I like it that it has a bit sort of texture. It's not this perfect airbrush. So it's the same, kind of, it's the same sort of. No problem. All right. Okay. So now to the character. Now we have sort of an environment which I I tend to sort of just go back to noodling on the environment because I think that's so much fun. But since this is a more character based thing, 
let's uh, give him some attention here. I'm also first going to just kind of put him into this environment in case of colors. And I want to have, we need sort of skin tones, but skin tones never looks like skin so tones in every environment. By the way, I have, I have the same airbrush here, just in overlay mode. Because uh, I also use that a lot to just paint directly. Back to how genius overlay really is. So I'm just pretty softly putting in, he will be really hard lit from above there. Just to get that sort of feeling. just want to play a bit around with, I'm going to duplicate this silhouette and push him a bit more out of focus and sort of just see if it looks better, if it's a bit closer to us or not. Not super happy with the placement here. Yeah, maybe something like that. it's not a huge difference, but I feel it's a bit better. So let's get some more details on this man. It's it's smart to turn off like every like this light with will affect him. So if I pick colors, I'm not gonna get what I pick if there's a Layers on top of that, kind of messing that up. I'm trying to just sort of mold the light a bit in case of how. I also want some of that red to kind of show a little on him. That's a weird haircut. I wish I could have that. It's also cleaning up the edges. You know that it was really rough. So this is also a good time to kind of mold that silhouette a bit more. It's a funny mouth. Kind of want him to have like a half open mouth. So you see a little teeth. He has the look of a sort of a, a little shock and surprise, and it's because the phone rings in the public toilet, I think. And it's Morpheus on the other line. <laughs> I 
Now we see how crooked he really is. Flipping. Oh man. But we have a cool tool called Liquify. Have you all tried Liquify in Procreates? It's almost too much fun. Like you can. <laughs> yeah. Or... You heard this sound. <laughs> Bang. So here you can really like change. Yeah, maybe it's not so bad. At least I'm getting a phone call. Hey, Morpheus. The white rabbit? What? Yeah, exactly. Imagine Morpheus sitting there with his leather coat and sunglasses just waiting for that call <laughs> from the toilet. You are the one. Uh, I'm also keen to see the new Joker movie. It's kind of like a bit of the same color feel here. Has anybody seen it yet? Got really good reviews. Just have a couple of minutes left, I think, or any more questions while we're still running yeah like he's just one layer now it's just yep haven't really uh, I kind of like working with as few layers as possible um, it's, yeah like it's still fairly rough right so it's not really Stuff in, isn't super defined yet. <laughs> that mouth doesn't work, does it? That's better. Like, is a bit unhappy. Um, I spend usually between one and two work days on a full concept. Uh, if it's just a character. I can do that uh, in less time, but if it's like an environment, it's going to be up to detail like you saw in the beginning. It's usually one to two eight hour days. And on special occasions like the, the wolf uh, in front of the candy store, that was more detailed, so that took me three days. Yeah, I um, I usually go six thousand pixels by something like that's the widest, so I know that I have a lot of pixels to go on. But also lately, I just like this one is UHD, so it's about four thousand to two thousand, three thousand eight hundred forty by one thousand two thousand one hundred sixty. Yeah, no, it's uh, if I have like 18 layers in Procreate, I'm fine. I can, that's more than enough. Sorry, I DPI is only relevant if you're gonna print it, um, so I don't really care. <laughs> It doesn't really matter as long as I'm if I'm printing it then then it matters. If I'm doing like a children's book or so, then it should be like three hundred DPI. But uh people very often mistake sort of resolution for DPI, but resolution is really the how many pixels wide and how many pixels tall your your uh, canvas is. And the DPI doesn't really matter at 
before it's printing time. Yeah. Well, it's, it will be more subtle stuff. Like I would probably go in and add, like on the walls here, I would probably go in and add more variations. Like here, for example, just to add some more green there. Maybe like the posters on that side there. Uh, Pick like yeah, like if that poster is kind of yellow, or red, uh, something like that. Maybe I will go in and also with kind of like the detail in the room to to get the light to hit these different things. So it actually they're actually better integrated in the in the scene. Also, I will draw on top of this line. Like if I turn that off, it. Kind of looks weird now, but if you, I can add some like light to that to outline to make that really. It's nice to have that outline alpha locked because you can paint on that as well, or erase it sometimes. It's <clears throat> get rid of it here and there. For example, the telephone cord. It's nice if it kind of picks up a little of that light. Okay. Ah, five or ten more minutes. Yeah. Well, isn't somebody coming behind me here or after me? Okay. You're just going to have to carry me out. <laughs> So a little display on this phone over here. Small stuff like that helps a little. And also another brush, which is going to help to make this environment more kind of believable is to get some of that. Just some gritty lines. Gonna make that soap also a different color. Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, like now, I'm working on the iPad Mini. Um, I kind of like that one. I, I carry it everywhere and I've been using it for a while. And the advantage of the mini is that you can't go so big, also. It's a, like a disadvantage in one way, but you work small. So <clears throat> you kind of like you have to start zooming in like this to do a lot of detail. But uh, keeping it like this, this is like a bit bigger than thumbnail. <clears throat> helps a lot also to not do all that detail I kind of skip around in the painting I do a little here a little there and if you see my time lapses on my YouTube channel for example it's I'm never one place for very long I keep like jumping around to kind of see like ah oh, here I need something oh, oh there I need something so I'm jumping around a bit I also want, <clears throat> since this is a movie scene, let's call it that, we need some uh, smoke. 
I also want to differentiate a little the color. Like in the mirror, it's very similar to the wall on the side. It's, it's a bit annoying. So I'll also put some, just some lighter color back there, just so it's a bit more also this red haze coming through just to so it's easier to see where the mirror actually is stopping and then a bit more a bit atmosphere in the room here it also helps popping out the silhouette in the foreground And what I would like to do now is to, I'm going to turn off this, so just to have this environment. Copy that, copy all, paste. So I get a copy of everything in one layer. <clears throat> and I'm going to crank the values a bit. Just to grade the whole thing a little. Gonna move the smoke back here, so get a little more of that. And another thing I'd like to do, just to, which I do sometimes, is I put perspective, blur. I'm not gonna do it too much because it's gonna look like this, but, <laughs> but just a subtle thing. So the telephone. And that sort of side comes a bit out of focus in a way. Well, it's like a cheating the out of focus thing a little. Yeah, definitely. Uh, like this last stuff here is kind of like the final grading stuff. I can show you another couple of things that I do at the end. Um, that bleed. There we go, the vignette. <clears throat> vignette brush. There I put the layer into soft light mode. I'll pick like a dark color that's like relevant to the scene, maybe something like that. And I tap one tap into a layer. So now I have like a vignette I can so I can move about where sort of the focus should be, which darkens the rest of the room even more. But it gives that nice focus on what is most important in the shot. And as a last little tip, it's gonna go on top here. Um, if you want some grain in your shot, pick like totally neutral gray, 50%. You can go into your value here and just type it in here. Um, and then put that in an overlay layer. Nothing happens then because that's like in the middle. It's not bright or dark, it's just neutral. And then you add noise, plenty of noise, and then you desaturate that noise a bit because we're after more of like a film grain look rather than noise. And then we scale that noise up. And now we just tone that opacity down just a little. So it has like this nice grain. Yeah, I think that's it, people. Thank you for coming. Thank you.